has logged in to, who has logged in to this uh, webinar. Um, before we begin, I just want to state some ground rules, something that's gonna help us in our webinar. As you, uh, I don't know if you know, but we have interpretations. So if you want to, if you want to listen to this presentation in Spanish, these are the, the steps you need to follow to be able to, to switch to the Spanish language. Or you can stay in English if that's your preferred language. Um, so as you can see, we have the Zoom controls. You have to click inter interpretation and then you are able to click on the language that you that you prefer to hear this webinar on. And you will only be listening to that language throughout the whole webinar. And some ground rules, basic rules for the, our webinars is we encourage a space of learning and respect. All microphones and cameras, as you are aware, have been disabled during the webinar. Please, we do ask you to write your full name, country, and organization in the chat. And you can write any question that you may have through the, throughout the webinar on our Zoom chat as well. And we'll be able to get to them at the end once uh, the, the presentation has finalized. If you're participating via Facebook Live, you can submit your, quest your questions or comments through the uh, comment section, and we will be answering those questions as well. And uh, yeah, uh, enjoy. So again, my name is Jimena, and I'm here to welcome you to our 10th Marfan webinar series. Today, we have with us uh, Tasa, the Turnef Atoll Sustainability Association, who has been the co-manager for the biggest marine reserve in Belize since 2013, and to showcase TASA's work in control and surveillance, we have Andres Aldana, who is the Technology Solutions and Program Technical Support Officer at TASA, who transitioned from a government position to an NGO position in 2019. Since day one at TASA, he has, been a, he has been involved in resource conservation, first as conservation officer, then transitioning in 2020 to, to park director, and now as he is the technical solutions and programs, techn, technology solutions and programs technical support officer. He will be sharing with us um, what TASA has been done, has been doing so far in regards to advancing in marine surveillance with the use of a multi-sensor platform that incorporates radar and optical imagery to detect and document vessel activities from shore. I am uh, very happy to present Andres and give him the floor. And also I'm very happy that we have been able to support TASA throughout uh, throughout all of our programs, as well as with donations from the Summit Foundation. So Andres, please take it away. Yes. Uh... Thank you very much for the introduction, Jimena, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to present today. So I'll be presenting to you the, the multi-sensor the advancing on the multi-sensor platform. Uh, can you guys see the presentation? Not yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so 
just to give you an insight of what Turnif is, um, Turnif is the largest marine reserve in Belize and the largest, most biodiverse coral atoll in the Caribbean. It's located roughly 30 miles due east of Belize City. And the entire marine reserve covers 363,400 acres of seagrass, mangroves, and coral reef. Um, the atoll was established a marine reserve in 2010, and in 2013, the Turnif Atoll Sustainability Association took co-management of the MPA uh, with the Belize Fisheries Department, which is a government entity. We have a total of three conservation outposts in Turnif. First outpost is located up north, being Mauer Key, then Calabash Key, our central headquarter, which is also located east of the atoll, and then Kibokel which is our southernmost um, uh, conservation outpost in Turnif. Uh, so we'll be focusing today on Kibokel, which is the one that hosts the marine reader, <clears throat> the marine reader. And it's our smallest conservation outpost with the largest responsibility uh, in ensuring that the conservation zone and spanning aggregation that's located south is fully protected. So some of the threats we focus or what we, we have found out in Turnif is illegal fishing. There's illegal fishing occurring uh, all throughout uh, the different marine protected areas. And it's something that all managers for the different MPAs try to, 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 to tackle on a daily basis. We also have fishing in conservation zones, uh, fishing without licenses. We have a number of fishers that would enter a marine protected area with a, without a license and would want to engage in commercial fishing. We have fishers that do not respect closed seasons and fish out of season product. Uh, fishers fishing undersized products, small lobsters, small conks. We also have uh, coastal development that, that's a threat to our ecosystems here in Turnif. Uh, tourism development, different resorts building up um, uh, different buildings without proper permits, uh, land speculation, and lastly, climate change. <laughs> so some strategies to combat IUU fishing, which is illegal, unreported, and undocumented fishing. Uh, we have integration with the national plans and policies. Turnif is part of a national um, marine protected area system in Belize. So we, we have a network that all these MPAs meet and, you know, try to to work together on, on combating IUU and also other threats that they might fa face within other regions in Belize. And for us at TASA, we've integrated the use of technology to improve efficiency and reach. Uh, we've been using the SMART, which is the SMART um, tool. We've been using that since 2016. We also use drones for enforcement and surveillance. Uh, we have a vessel monitoring system that we're currently using at Turnif and also the M2 radar that was integrated to our system in 2022, uh, 2021, I'm sorry. So the radar system is fairly new. We have had it for roughly a year and a half and uh, it's helped us to improve our efficiency for the Kibokel conservation zone. Um, so what is the marine monitor? It's one of a kind system and it so happens that we are the, the organization that has been able to to use that system in Belize. Uh, it was developed it was developed in 2015 by protected air and protected seas. And the system provides a low cost, easy to use tool uh, for improved monitoring of marine managed areas. Uh, you know, we have some stations that might not have enough reach or enough manpower to, to surveillance, to have surveillance of an entire marine protected area. So with the use of the radar, it, it expands the reach for officers to be able to monitor uh, from a farther distance. Uh, it's created specifically for marine resource managers to increase strategic management and enforcement in protected areas. Like for example, in our case at Kibokel, what the officers do is that they monitor the conservation zone from within the control center and they're able to see if there's any vessel activity within the area. From there, they can, they can plan out their patrols and, and target specific areas where there's um, high vessel activity. And the systems have been deployed in the United States, Mexico, Palau, Philippines, Ecuador, and now the first system in Belize. Uh, so the M2 overview, it's, it's comprised of two systems, the radar, which is a 
a low cost uh, commercial product that's on, on the shelf. And the brand that we use is a Faruno system. So this system is able to detect objects in the water and uh, has a pulse return of solid objects. It's designated to track boats. So whenever the system picks up any vessel activity, the, uh, the system would be able to, to, to create a truck that the officers are able to, to, to look at and also the, be able to look at the distance from where the, the vessel is to the conservation zone. And also trucks fall, truck false targets such, such as waves, rain, storm systems. So as I mentioned, it's, it's a system made of two, a radar system and a camera. So it has a three nautical mile high resolution camera that's able to point out uh, to a specific location that the radar system would pick out. So once the radar picks up a vessel moving in, in, in a certain direction, the camera would automatically spin to that location and start also recording photographs of the vessel with the track of the radar system. It has a built-in built artificial intelligence that combines both systems to work in sync. It's a daylight camera, so the thing with the camera is it, it's only able to capture images during the day. Conditions and distance may impact quality. So for example, sometimes it might be foggy, so the, the camera might not be able to get a clear picture of the vessel. And uh, for our case, we have the tower that obstructs the, the, vis the visibility of the, of the camera. So two of these systems combined makes up the marine monitor. So it also, in, also um, comes with system sensors. So apart from the radar and the camera, we have the weather station that's mounted on the tower. And we also have an AIS system, which is automatic identification system that would link to the trackers on the cargo ships or commercial um, cruise ships. The other part of the marine monitor is the control center. This is, this is where all the information is collected. This is where all data is stored and this is where all data is transmitted to the cloud. So it has a built-in monitor along with two computers. One computer that uh, one computer that controls the radar and one computer that controls the camera. So the M2 local system, this system, the M2 local system is a system that's located on site. This is the tower, the radar, the weather stations, the camera, and the control system that's at, located at Kibokel. And the data is stored on this system. The, the, you're able to access the information through the M2 viewer. And our officers are able to, to log into your accounts and be able to look at all information collected by the M2 and be able to analyze the information and also be able to, to control the camera. The M2 Cloud Viewer is the information that the system collects is uploaded to the cloud. And then from there, we can access it from we can access it remotely also and look at all information uh, that, that the system collects. So the staff on the ground, the conservation officers on the ground are able to log on to the system directly. And officers or staff that is are located uh, not, not on site our main office are able to log into the system remotely. So as like I mentioned, the Marine, uh, the M2 computer controls the camera and the TZ, the, coast, the time zero coastal monitoring computer controls the radar system. These two computers are linked uh, by an artificial intelligence and the artificial intelligence program is the one that and allows the boat systems to, to talk to each other and, and coordinate on, on trucks, on recording trucks and taking photographs. So this is the radar system as to how the guys would look at it on the monitor on site. So as you can see, there are two dots that are 1089 and 1184. Those are two objects that the radar has picked up. So whenever the, the, the officers on the ground are able to look at these two dots, they're able to also uh, go to the camera setting and use the camera to, to identify what these two single dots on the radar are. And from there, they can see if it's a commercial fishing vessel or if it's a tourism vessel or if it's a cruise ship that's crossing uh, the southern part of Terenif. 
So with this, the radar system also allows you to uh, be able to, to distinguish the distance and also control the distance of the radar. The radar system gives us a total of eight nautical miles and uh, we can narrow it down to half a mile or one mile. And in this case, it's eight nautical miles and one nautical mile on both sides on each, on each side. And the identification of vessels is done by, by the camera. So as I mentioned, the officers will log in, look at this and monitor the screen for any vessel activity. So the M2 viewer, this is an image of how the M2 viewer looks on the control station. So the officers would be able to look at each truck. As you can see on, on, on the left, uh, all of those are individual trucks that have, have been recorded. And if the camera is able to, to pick up the trucks, it will take images. So when, when the officers log in and see the different trucks and the times, they would click on it and they would be able to see from where the truck started and where the truck end, or if, if the vessel was stationary or if the, it was a false, false truck. And this is how it will look once the, the truck is, is clicked. Uh, so this is one truck from this morning, actually. And as you can see, it has uh, that it triggered an alarm. So this means that the vessel was within the spawning irrigation zone. So the spawning irrigation zone is off limits for fishing. There is no fishing is allowed within this zone. So that means that once you see this, the officer has a responsibility of looking at the images. And from this image, you can see it's two dive boats that have been doing recreational diving within the area. And far behind those two dive boats, it's a, it's a cargo ship crossing. And the cargo ship is linked via the IAS, which is the seaboard blue um, ship that had crossed by Turniff earlier this morning. And so from here, the guys are able to see all the vessel activity and properly strategize their patrols and deploy uh, to the different locations of the conservation zone on, um, to ensure that these vessel, vessels are, are properly uh, abiding by the rules and regulations of the MPA. As I mentioned, the uh, uh, automatic identification system, the system is linked automatically to the tracker on the vessel. And this data is transmitted also to the M2 viewer. So once, once this vessel is linked to the system, it gives you a, the name of the vessel, which is the hyperlink. And once you click on the hyperlink, it will take you directly to, to the marine traffic website. And then you can, you can see all the details of that vessel and from where it departed and its final destination that the vessel is heading to. Um, with this system, the AIS uh, gives us a total of 25 to 30 nautical miles. And so all these cruise ships, tankers, cargo ships crossing through the shipping lanes between Turniff and Belize um, are picked up by the system. So filtering trucks. So what the guys do at the at each day or at the end of the day is that they would be able to look at all trucks, play back the trucks that have been recorded throughout the day and look at what trucks were, what trucks triggered the, the system or the alarm or what trucks could be false trucks. So they can be able to punch in the dates and uh, filter it by time. And also if it was uh tagged or untagged or if it includes any photographs and then they can update the trucks and then look at the look at the um, the results uh for example they can also put, put, um, punch in or, or adjust the time um the speed of the vessel and the distance of the vessel and also um be able to distinguish what vessels were in the area so it's a very very, very user-friendly interface that, that the officers can use in order for them to be able to, to have a broader understanding of how the system works and what um, they could have done uh, during the day on their patrol route more effectively. So this is an example of uh, vessel trucks. Uh, so you can see the transit behavior would be a straight line would probably be a ship that would be crossing on the shipping lane and would be heading down straight probably to Honduras or Watan. 
or you would have ships that would be wanting to enter the conservation zone. At that time, probably the, the enforcement team would have been departing or deploying from Kibokel. And once this fishing vessel sees that the team has deployed, they will hurry turn back to exit out the conservation zone. So on the left, you can see the loiter behavior. That means that they were trying to enter the zone and then heading back out. Pile struck examples, as I mentioned, you can have wave systems, storm systems, or even uh, sargassum or debris that, that the system can pick up. So you can see a storm system, it will be it would pick up the clouds and then that would create a, some sort of a truck. And then the wave noise, sometimes the sea might be quite choppy, that it even picks up the height of the waves on the system. So whenever we're, we're running um, or, or querying data, we have to be very specific at uh, the, the, the data that we want to, to, to collect and the data we want to produce at the end of the, of the week or at the end of, of the month. Target confidence, uh, the score between zero and one indicates likelihood that the truck is a vessel. So for example, likely if it exceeds one, then likely it's a false target. And if it's below one, then it's a true vessel. And uh, from there, we can uh, look at each truck and then filter them out in order for us to run our reports. It also has the water station, as I mentioned. So it would produce the, the information also on the M2 viewer. And that would allow the operators to also know what um, what winter conditions they may encounter while deploying on, on, on an enforcement patrol. So from all of this, that all, all of this information that the system collects, we are able to generate reports from the M2 viewer. Um, this can be done for administration purposes and for enforcement purposes. And even for even the officers on the ground are able to generate the reports just to see what information the system has collected while they have been deployed on, 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 on a patrol. Um, like I mentioned, it's able to play back trucks. And uh, once you click generate report, it would give you all the trucks, all the hours, all the trucks that triggered the alarm, and even would include the images of the vessels that were within the area. So trucks are classified by three behaviors, uh, loiter, entered zone of interest and triggered alarm. This means that a vessel spent more than the allotted time within the conservation zone, and then the system would send an alert, and that would mean that a vessel was present within the area. Transit entered the zone of interest, but did not trigger the alarm. That means the vessel was moving at a constant rate, entered the area, and then exited. That means the vessel just trans transited through the conservation area. Uh, outside zone sites means that the vessel did not enter the, the area. So this means that vessels that would uh, reach close to the conservation zone and stay outside of the area, but would be close by. So from, from what the officers can do when they generate reports, they get these graphs as well. So they can see the track by hours of the day and the different specifications of the three different trucks, uh, trucks by the day of the week, and also trucks over date and date range. So all of this information can be generated automatically from the system and the guys are able to look at this information and, and include it on their, on their weekly reports for, for, for administration and purposes. And from there, we can see how effective the officers have, have been on the ground. Um, with this, we have also been able to, to look at the resources we've been using, especially fuel, um, Prior to this, there they were planned patrols and the patrols may head a direction other than where the actual vessels would be encountered. And then, you know, that's, that's fuel being used and um, not being quite effective. So with this system on site, they're able to look at where the, all the vessels are located and properly plan their, their patrol for deployment. So at the end of the day or at the end of the week or end of the month, we are able to also re, um, produce a, a detailed report. So now this detailed report includes all the information collected uh, for the different time period you may want. 
And this includes all the trucks, the heat mops, the different mops, um, the different uh, trucks, the trucks that triggered alarm, trucks that didn't trigger the alarm, trucks that were recorded during the day, trucks that were recorded during the night. And from here, we can look at how, how effective the system has been as well. So it's based on a scientific style overview. So it's quite detailed when, when it's produced and um, it's able to be downloaded in PDF format. So as I mentioned, information that, that's on this report is the since the stem function, the weather, the trucks of interest, truck cones, heat maps, trucks over time, day and night trucks. So the way we set up this system is that we receive a report weekly. So every Monday we will receive this report and from there we can uh, look at all the information collected in a week's time. And also with this system, what happens is that once there's a slight, uh, could be a slight malfunction, the system would alert us. And then from there, we would contact uh, the, 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 the company, which is Protected Seas. And then from there, we would liaise with them in trying to troubleshoot uh, any malfunction with the system. For now, we've only had two, which would be the camera, but we've um, already in, uh, fixed that issue. But even if the camera isn't functioning, the radar system is still collecting trucks during the time. The only thing would be that you wouldn't be getting images. Uh, what we're trying to work on is trying to be able to get an infrared uh, high resolution camera so that uh, we can also pick up images at night because the, the, the radar system does pick up trucks at night and then the guys, when they already are looking at the system or get an alert, uh, they will have to deploy at night to that specific location. And uh, you might encounter a vessel or it might be something else drifting at sea. So this system also allows you to log into the M2 viewer uh, via your, your mobile device. So once you have an account set up with the system, you can log into the link and then enter your credentials and be able to monitor the system uh, remotely. Um, we also are able to, to access the entire system from Kibokel remotely as well. And uh, this is done by another program uh, that we use to look at the functionality of the system. If anything needs to be troubleshooted from afar, we're able to log into the system and make the different changes and be able to, to have that system up back and running for, for the guys to be able to monitor the area. And um, like I mentioned, you get this mobile viewer works just like the, the M2 viewer. Uh, the beauty of it, it's that it's in your palm of your hands. So almost coming to an end, the M2 alternative at all. What are the activities of interest for this system that we set up in, in Turnif? So when we were in discussion of setting up the system, we were thinking of either doing it up north in Turnif and Marquis for the Marquis spawning site or Kibokel for the Kibokel spawning site. Then we noticed that the Kibokel spawning site is, is, is of high importance because it's a multi-species spawning site but also it's highly visited by, by uh, recreational divers and, and tourism um, activities occur near the area. Uh, the spawn site is within the Kibokel Conservation Zone and uh, the Kibokel Conservation Zone is, is a very, very biodiverse um, area. And fishers have been trying to enter the zone illegally as well or at night. So having this system placed down at Kibokel is, is very, very, very effective, not only for the management, but also for, for the, the protection of species and for ensuring that the users of the area abide by the rules. Um, also for tourism visitations, whenever we um, have officers deployed on patrol, probably they might have recreational tourism vessels that visit these dive sites. And from there, we're able to look at how many vessels visited the area, and if it's a high quality image, we can even make out uh, the, the company or the vessel name uh, so that we can, are able to know or track down who is uh, this tourism company using the Kibokel Conservation Zone. And the system is used for live monitoring. So there's always a person stationed at Kibokel who looks at this monitor uh, continuously. And from there, we're able to have, you know, the officers are able to plan out their patrols. 
uh, not only that they are able to, to look at it uh, on site, we also have the responsibility as managers to look at the system remotely. So whenever the guys are deployed, there's always someone on the, online looking at the system and looking at any activity that might be happening within the conservation zone while the patrol is out, uh, probably look, um, looking at another site within the area. Uh, the system is functioning via solar. So it has a solar, solar panel system that provides power to, to the control center and the radar and camera, and also powers the entire building for Kibo Kill. So uh, that's what is the insight of the M2 radar and how we've been using it. Uh, what we've been trying to work on is how can we integrate the system with SMART and be able to have these systems work together uh, probably in the near future. But uh, we have been growing and learning a lot from the system and also using the information very effectively. And uh, we're looking forward to, to, to the collaboration with Protected Seas in looking at installing on other, other radar systems in turn if to monitor, to be able to monitor the entire atoll. So for now, uh, I would say, does anyone have any questions? Hi, um, thank you very much, Andres. Uh, I just wanted to tell everybody that if you do have questions, please uh, put them on the chat so that we can address them correctly. Uh, we do have one, Andres, and it says, do you have any difficulties with vandalism of the town? Samuel Barrett is asking that. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, we, this this system is set up at Kibokel and it's a remote location far away from, from any urban area. The only visitations we get at Kibokel would be from either fishers uh, traversing through Kibokel or uh, any recreational tourism vessels that would stop by at Kibokel for, for their service intervals. Um, we always keep an officer on site. So there's always a personnel present uh, during, during any visitation. Uh, so we haven't haven't had any any vandalism as yet, <laughs> but everything is is properly taken care of. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Martha Prada is asking, how much does the system cost? So the system, roughly, an estimate was one hundred and twenty-five thousand USD. That included the uh, commercial brand um, uh, radar system, along with the control center. Uh, the AI system, and also the installation, the shipping and installation of it here in Belize. Thank you. And Eden Garcia uh, is asking, so far, has DASA been able to make any arrests or provide assistance to voters using the system? Yes. So with the system, we've been able to, to do a few arrests during the day and also specifically during at night. As I mentioned, once the system picks up a truck, it sends an alert and the guys are able to look at the specific location and deploy. Uh, but yes, we've been able to, to use the system effectively in, in uh, making an arrest, making arrests. Thank you. Is there any more questions? Oh, Jerry Vasquez is asking, with this system, is there any future proposals for expansion with other NGOs or law enforcement? Yeah, so we have had uh, other discussions with other MPAs and other co-managers in looking at how effective this, this system would be in the area. Uh, for one, uh, what we've learned of our system is uh, 
when installing, you have to have the proper height of the tower in order to, for you to have a, a clear visual of the area. Um, also looking at installing the camera in a way that you won't have any obstruction. Like in our case, whenever we are looking at a specific area, the tower is, is in the way. So what we're working on right now is uh, placing the camera in, in a way that it would it would not be uh, it would not be looking at any obstruction, but having a clear view and a higher view of of the area. Especially um, whenever you're you're zooming to an area and then you're like right at the height of the mangrove canopy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, but as, as I mentioned, um, with this system, what we're we're looking at is reducing the the cost of 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 fuel and being able to have more effective patrols deployed from Kibokel. And as I mentioned, we're also looking to to install these systems in the north and central area, especially to cover the the conservation zones and be able to have a, a wider range uh, for the radar throughout Turniff Atoll. Thank you, Andres. Yeah. Um, Peter, Murray is asking, how do you interface what you get from SMART with this system? So with SMART, um, what we've been using with SMART is collecting all the information that officers uh, use or record their observations while on patrol. And with the radar system, what we get is just looking at the trucks and vessel activity within the area. So what we're looking at is being able to have the two systems work together. So for now, what we've been doing is that when there's a no patrol day, the officers are able to, to still log into SMART and record a patrol by using the radar system. So they would be monitoring any vessel activity uh, from the station itself, but more using the, the, the radar system and logging that in SMART. And that's how we've been, been using it for now. Uh, the other thing is that um, the officers on a daily basis, they would go out on a patrol and record a number of vessel activity and we can be able to also log into the radar system and look at the vessel activity recorded by the system and be able to, to look at how the two systems have been functioning because one is being used by an AI and then the other is being used by um, the officers on the ground. Thank you for your, that explanation, Andres. Um, are there any more questions? Um, uh, uh, Peter Murray has another one, and he's asking: Do okay. you use the system having? Do you use the system having utility over? A, do you see? Sorry, the system having utility over a wider area than just the Tessa area. I would say it depends on the the site location. Um, if you're gonna install a system at a site that there's zero to little activity, then to me it would be ineffective. But if it's uh, if it's an MPA that has high fishing activity, um, high officers have been seeing a high increase in in illegal or um, illegal activity, especially occurring at night. I would say it would be it would be a great site for for installation of the system. Um, again, you don't want to be deploying uh, vessels out blindly and not knowing what they would encounter out at a specific location, but being able to have a radar system and be able to look at trucks and especially the images of these vessels, uh, the officer on the ground will have a clearer mind of which vessel they will encounter 
uh, during the patrol and also be more effective on how to deploy their patrol uh, to encounter these vessels well located at, at that specific site but uh, for us it's been quite effective and um, we've we've also built up the capacity of, of of our officers to be able to log into the system and be able to to look at these trucks and be able to distinguish between false trucks and true trucks and uh, be able to look at the information in order for them uh, to properly look at their patrols routes and uh, saving resources also. Thank you very much, Andres. Um, does anybody else have another question about the system? Okay, so uh, we don't have any more questions for now. So I just want to thank Andres. I want to thank you for your time and your dedication in this presentation and for explaining to us what TASA is doing to better understand the vessel activity and also to strengthen your control and surveillance program. Um, also, I want to let everybody know that we have uh, feedback survey about the webinar that we would really appreciate if you could take the time and answer our questions. The link is has already been placed on the chat. So if you would be nice enough to go in and just answer the few questions, we will greatly appreciate it. And also, uh, we would like to take a picture of all the people that has been able to join us on the webinar. So if you could all please turn on your cameras. And Andres, if you could stop uh, sharing the presentation so that we can all be like on the same, um, yeah. yeah, so that we can take a picture. So if uh, you can all help me put on your cameras, please. Okay, so Peter says that he ha he's not allowed by host to uh, turn the camera on. Can we give him permission, please? Okay, there you go. Um, smile. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody who joined us today, and stay tuned for our next webinar. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye.